Hi everyone, Vicky here with a new Mixed Media Canvas. While I was in Version Scrap in Paris, I visited the Carabelle booth. They have a big collection of paints, inks, sprays, stencils, dyes, but I really fell in love with their stamps. They have great designs for mixed media projects, and you can see some of them here. And what I really love is that they have those extra, extra large stamps that they are great for uh, big mixed media projects like in canvases as well as big art journals. So I couldn't help myself, I just had to buy some of their products and I'm going to show you today how I have uh, put them in use. Carabel Studio is a French company, so it's uh, easy to get uh, the products if you live in Europe. But if you live in the US, Simon Says Stamp also has their products. And uh, as always, I am going to share some links where you can find the products just uh, below the video. So let's get started with the project. So I got myself uh, this uh, huge stamp, which is a tree. And you can see how big it is. And I have also got those two stamp sets, one that has leaves and flowers that uh, goes along with the tree, as well as those uh, cute kids, a boy and a girl, that you can uh, hang their swing from the tree. So I am going to work on a canvas today, and that's just because I have that huge uh, stamp. I didn't want to limit myself into a small page on my art journal. Also, I wanted to go three-dimensional and uh, uh, working on a canvas gives me that uh, freedom. I am going over my canvas with a big brush and applying some metallic paint and this is the acrylic metallic paint by Prima. The light one that I am using is called Light Patina and the darker one is called Rich Turquoise. So I am creating my background which is a sky and I am mixing both those colors directly on the canvas. I am not using any water at all, I am just applying the color directly. And I am also going to add a little bit of color on the sides of the canvas so I don't have to frame the canvas when it's finished. To lighten up my background I am using a little bit of gesso and this is Faber-Castell gesso which is very thin and easy to spread. So I am adding some uh, white areas on my sky, let's say that they are clouds. For the bottom of my canvas uh, where the ground is going to be I am using two more metallic paints by Prima and these are called Lime Peel and Green Olive. As you can see, I like to add a touch of the color on the lid, so when I store them, I know exactly what color is in each uh, uh, jar. So I am going to go ahead and apply the color directly on my canvas, and just like I did on my sky, I am going to mix both those colors directly on the canvas with my brush. I'm also going on the sides as well. Those Prima metallic paints give a really beautiful shine on the project. Okay, I also need to apologize about all those crazy noises that you can hear on the background. Today it's so windy outside and I can't do really anything about it. Anyway, I'm using a Carabelle Studio stencil today and I really love this uh, stencil. And I'm just going over the paint with a baby wipe and I'm wiping off some of the areas where the paint wasn't dry. But I wasn't really happy with uh, how much paint I, was, I managed to lift, so I decided to go over the stencil with my gesso. I am using Faber-Castell gesso again, which is nice and light, and I'm just applying it with a dabber. So let's say again that these are clouds. This is a mixed media project, so the more uh, interest you add to the background, the better. As always, you will find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using today just below the video in the description area. Since I had all that gesso on my craft mat, I decided to add some splashes. So I have thinned it down with water and with a very thin uh, brush, I'm adding my splashes on the sky. And let's move on to the next step. I'm just making sure that all my gesso and the paint is nice and dry. And now I'm going to do some uh, stenciling with my modeling paste and I'm using another uh, stencil by Carabelle Studio. I'm going to apply my modeling paste or my embossing paste, whatever works, uh, over the stencil and I'm going uh, to go over around some random areas. I also have a rough idea of where I want to stamp uh, the tree, so I'm staying away from that area. And once the modeling paste is dry, I am ready to stamp the tree. Now just because I am going to be working on a canvas which is very textured, I'm not going to, I don't expect to get a perfect impression. I just want to have a rough idea of uh, that tree. 
I am also going to stamp only the tree and not the grass at this stage. So I am uh, trying to decide where this is going to go and I'm going to use my archival link. This is uh, coffee and I am making sure that I apply enough ink so that I can at least get a decent uh, impression. And here is a tip. If you want a perfect impression, then you can stamp your images on a daily paper and uh, then stick the daily paper on your canvas. Then you will get a perfect impression and uh, the daily paper kind of disappears once you stick it down with gel medium. So anyway, I have uh, the, stamp, the tree impression on my canvas and now I can go ahead and add a little bit of color with my brown marker on the tree trunk. I am also going to add a little bit of color with my brown marker on uh, the branches that are more obvious. And uh, actually that not having a good impression of the tree works great for me for this project just because I want to add leaves on top of the tree. I want to cover up most of those branches. So you will see that at the end it's going to work perfectly. The marker that I am using is by Faber Castell, the big brass marker, and um, it works great for this because it's permanent and it will not smudge or smear if I go ahead and stamp on top. And any marker that is permanent would really work for that. I am going with a darker marker now and I am going to shade only one side of the tree. I am going for the left side, as you can see. And I'm going to add highlighting later on and you can see how this uh, tree trunk is going to look dimensional later. Now from uh, another stamp set, the one that has the leaves for the tree, if uh, I was working directly on a paper, I would go ahead and stamp the whole stamp uh, as it is. But now just because I cannot get a nice impression, I prefer to use my fingers and stamp uh, little by little. With this technique I have more control of uh, where exactly I am stamping and I can make my tree as full as I want to. So I decide where uh, my leaves are going to go. And to stamp all those leaves I am using two different archival links which are olive and fern green. So I'm happy with how my tree looks and I'm going to stamp the little girl. Now you can also give her a, a friend like uh, that uh, cute little boy but I decided to go only with a little girl today. So I'm going to use my stampa magic and I'm doing so because I want to make sure that I'm going to hang that swing straight from the tree. You can also add some movement on uh, your project if uh, you stamp that on an ankle. If you're not familiar with uh, Stampa Magic, then uh, that's a, a really nice uh, tool to have in your stash because it helps you stamp uh, exactly where you want to or with, when you are using uh, those stamps that they are rubber, that uh, they are not clear and you cannot see exactly where you are stamping. So again, I'm not going for a perfect impression for the little girl. I just want to have uh, an idea of where that swing is and I am going to paper piece the girl. So uh, just because I had all that shine on the ground and on the background on my sky, I decided to add a little bit of that shine on the tree as well. So I am applying some of that metallic acrylic paint by Prima on those uh, stamps and I'm going over the tree again. I'm not going all over the tree, I'll just uh, stamp with that in uh, some different uh, uh, random areas and uh, just to add a little bit of shine there. So you can see that you can use your stamps with acrylic paints, you don't need to have all the colors on uh, ink pads. And now I am going to do that uh, dimensional uh, trick that I was telling you about. I'm going to add a little bit of gesso with uh, my craft knife only on uh, the right side of the tree trunk. And I am also going to zoom in in a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing.
I have stamped the little girl on some scrap white paper and I am coloring her with my Copic markers. You can use any type of coloring for that now. I am also going to paper piece her dress and I have colored that area with uh, acrylic paint which is shiny by Prima. I have tried uh, first stamping the girl and then coloring the dress but I found out that uh, my stamping lines were not as vibrant. The color that I've used is called fresh orange. I'm using my scissors to cut out the girl and the dress and I'm planning to stick that dress with uh, foam uh, adhesive at the back so just in case you can see underneath I'm adding a little bit of color at uh, the bottom dress. I am using two little foam squares at the bottom of the dress and uh, this way the dress is going to be dimensional. To stick everything down I am using soft matte gel by Prima. And now it's time to add some interest on the ground, so for that I am going to use again the two archival ink pads that I have used for the tree. And I'm uh, going to stamp that details that uh, I get from uh, the bottom of my stamp. Now again I'm not going for a perfect impression and I'm using parts of the stamp here and there. The idea here is just to add a little bit of interest where the green meets the sky, since I am going to cover up most of the part. So I am using a green cardstock and this is uh, green on both sides and I am going over it with my metallic paint. I am going to use this piece of cardstock to cut out grass as well as leaves for the tree for adding some dimensional uh, touches on my canvas. So I want this uh, cardstock to be shiny and uh, metallic looking just like everything else is on my canvas. Now I am going to use pieces of this uh, cardstock and uh, with my scissors I'm going to cut tiny little leaves. You can also use uh, dies if you have some that matches the size of uh, the tree. But I decided that uh, using uh, my scissors was much faster. You can always use a digital cutter if you have one. Once I have all the leaves ready, I am going to stick them down on the tree and I am not going to cover up the whole tree, I am just going to add a few randomly on different areas. And you can see how dimensional the project looks now just by adding a few leaves that stick out of uh, the canvas. I am also going to, st to stick down some of those uh, little flowers and I am uh, first uh, deciding where every flower is going to go and then again with my soft matte gel by Prima I am going to stick them down. And now again I'm using that piece of uh, green cardstock and I'm going to uh, cut some grass. You can use a die if you have one that cuts out grass or you can do like I'm doing here. So you can see that you don't really need a digital cutter or a die if uh, you want to make shapes as easy as those are. I'm going to make many of them so I can uh, layer them and stick them down on uh, my grass. To stick down the grass I'm using again my soft matte gel by Prima and uh, you can see that uh, this grass is going to add a nice touch to the whole uh, three dimensional look that I'm going for.
For the very bottom of my canvas, I am going to do a really nice technique. So I'm going to mix my matte gel with micro beads. Uh, these uh, micro beads that I am using are by Prima. The, the color is copper. So I'm mixing it with my matte uh, medium. And uh, although this gel looks white, once it dries, it's going to be transparent. And the only thing that you will be able to see are the micro beads. So I'm going to apply them at the very bottom as if it is uh, the ground. And uh, you will see at the photos at the end, once uh, that was all the gel was dry, how beautiful it looks. And uh, just because I couldn't stop uh, doing this technique, I am going to repeat that for the sky. And this time I'm using micro bits again by Prima. And uh, the color is uh, Splash. Again, I'm mixing it with my matte gel. And I am going to randomly apply it on the sky. I mainly stay where I have uh, white details, since this is going to uh, stand out even more, just because uh, this is a very pale blue color. Now for the finishing touches, I am using my brown marker and add a dot on uh, the bottom of each of uh, those dimensional leaves. And I'm just smudging it with my finger. This is going to add a little bit of shadow on the leaves. And again, I'm going to use my white gel pen and add a little bit of uh, interest and highlights on the leaves as well as on the grass. And just because you can never have enough details, I am adding some polka dots on the bust of uh, the girl's dress. I'm adding a little bit of highlights on the girl's dress as well. And uh, now I'm going to finish it off by sticking uh, two stickers. One that says beautiful and the other that says life. I am going to make sure that they are nicely down, stick down by using my matte gel again. And that was the canvas for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired, and if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of today's project. And if you need more inspiration, here are two more mixed media projects that I made a while back. Thank you all for watching!